OK, so welcome to this talk about the Conveyor community. First of all, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Ramon Roman Nissen. I'm the product manager for the migration toolkit for applications in, in Red Hat. And probably in relationship to this talk, the most interesting thing about myself is that uh, I was in uh, Red Hat Consulting for five years, leading larger scale migration projects. So that's why I guess they chose me for this uh, PM thingy that I've, do I've been doing for the past year. So without further ado, let's start talking uh, about Conveyor. And sorry for that, but I think uh, the first thing we should be doing is uh, getting a little bit of context of why we started this community. And this will be a, a series of figures and statistics and everything. So this might be a little bit of a snooze fest for the most uh, technical part of the audience. Sorry for that. I'll try to be as quick as possible. So get, let's get started. So let's get started with the latest CNCF uh, survey. 90% uh, of the respondents report using Kubernetes. So container wars are completely over. Nobody remembers other uh, container orchestration platforms, probably aside from the ones that are trying to run away from them. Uh, on the other hand, this uh, Gartner, latest Gartner forecast, uh, by 2022, more than 75% of global organizations will be running uh, container, uh, containers in, in production. So if we uh, get the two of them, then we can conclude that Kubernetes is becoming the default platform for application deployment. And it is also the target for uh, most of modernization uh, projects out there. Uh, I won't go through the whole uh, stuff that we have on the screen. Just to sum things up, there is a 30 billion business out there by 2026 related to application modernization. So that's, that's a huge number out there, especially for vendors and GSIs. But there seems to be a, a, a problem. Going back to the uh, Gartner uh, forecast, there seems to be a problem with the speed and the how uh, this modernization and migration is uh, currently happening. And the problem uh, is basically that there are a lot of uh, methodologies and tools out there, but on one hand, most of the existing tools uh, create some sort of vendor locking to any uh, cloud provider out there. And on the other hand, most methodologies av available out there sit within organizations are, and are not generic enough to be broadly transferable across uh, common scenarios. So uh, that's exactly what we are trying to solve with the, uh, with the Canberra community. And I don't know if you're familiar with that, so we'll, we'll, we'll get through the basics, and then we will focus on one of the projects that I'm involved in. So about the Canberra community, this is an, a completely open community that we have created to help organizations embrace, uh, adopt, and leverage Kubernetes. And we have a two-pronged approach to this uh, help, to this uh, kind of uh, yeah, ease of use of, of Kubernetes. On one hand, uh, we have a lot of uh, things related to knowledge sharing. So we are a, a full-blown community. We arrange uh, and schedule meetups on a regular basis. Uh, we are sharing uh, uh, articles in different blogs about how to migrate and modernize applications in the context of Kubernetes. And for example, even on the Red Hat side of things, we have open source, or we are currently working on open sourcing our methodology for application modernization and migration within the conveyor uh, community and repositories. The other hand of the uh, two-prong approach that we have for, for this uh, easing of Kubernetes adop adoption is a series of tools that are being, being uh, built uh, around a series of projects that have been contributed for the moment by IBM and Red Hat, but we are really open to have other uh, contributors and, uh, on board. Uh, we are really focused on, on this thing being an open community uh, in which everyone is welcome. And the proof of that is that we have submitted the Khmer community as a sandbox project for the CNCF. We're currently working on, on getting this thing onboarded on the CNCF. Uh, going back to the tools, of course, this is an open community, so all the tools are completely open source and can be consumed upstream. For those who want uh, some sort or some degree of support, we also have or will be shipping downstream distributions of the tools, which will be available as uh, supported operators for free in, in OpenShift. 
Next thing I want to share uh, related to this knowledge sharing that we are doing in the community, we just released the state of application modernization report uh, for 2022. We run a survey across seven, uh, 600 uh, organizations and companies out there. Uh, to understand the latest trends on application modernization and migration. It's pretty interesting, it's completely fresh, and it has been uh, published in our new and revamped uh, conveyor.io website. So I invite you to, to, to just take a look at it. And uh, let's get back to the different projects that we have within the conveyor community. So what we're trying to do with our projects is to uh, address three of the six R's that, of the six R's framework that uh, Amazon popularized back in the day. So we try to provide help to achieve three, uh, uh, the, the first three of these uh, R's. The thing is that we understand uh, the, these R's in our own way. So for example, we consider rehosting as uh, moving applications towards Kubernetes without performing uh, any change on the application itself. Uh, that will be, for example, moving uh, applications across different Kubernetes clusters, and the idea is to retain the images, the state, and the deployment manifest, and for that we will be using the Crane project. There's other possibility for rehosting, which would be uh, moving uh, virtual machines from the traditional platforms like Rev or uh, VMware towards uh, Kubernetes using Kubert or OpenShift virtualization in the case of uh, OpenShift. And for that, we will be using the forklift uh, project. Uh, next R will be replatforming, and we consider replatforming as a moving applications from other container orchestration platforms towards Kubernetes. For that, we have the move to cube uh, project from, from IBM Research. And finally, we consider refactoring as adapting your application, the source code of your application to run on Kubernetes coming from more traditional platforms like application servers or servlet containers uh, to have the application running on Kubernetes. And for that, we have the, the Tackle project. To measure the whole software delivery performance, we also have the Polaris pro uh, project that will help you uh, measure or track the different DORA metrics or DevOps metrics associated with, as I said, the software delivery performance. So uh, yeah, since I'm the, the, the PM from, from uh, Migration Toolkit for Applications, it makes sense for me to focus on the Tackle project and start talking about application portfolio modernization and migration with uh, the Tackle project. And usually I always like to start talking about Tackle with our vision statement, which I think is simple but uh, ambitious at the same time. I will read it. Uh, we want Tackle to become the ultimate open source toolkit to help organizations safely migrate and modernize their application portfolio to leverage Kubernetes, providing differential value on each stage of the adoption process. And I want to stress the word safely, because uh, as you might know, for the refactoring scenario, there is no magic in there. In there. there is no pixie dust, there is no magic button that you press and all the source code just runs on the target platform. There is a lot of work involved in there. So the approach that we had with Tackle is completely different from uh, what uh, Crane or Forklift do, which is fully automated. Our idea is to provide two differentiated things. On one hand, uh, provide as much insight as possible for adoption leads, for architects leading this migration and modernization process to have or, or to make informed decisions. So a lot of insight provided by the tool about the application portfolio. And on the other hand, for the developers, for the ones that are actually performing the changes on the source code and adapting it uh, to the target platform, we're trying to provide as much guidance as possible and of course some degree of uh, of automation uh, when possible. So as I said, two-pronged approach, two, two key uh, pillars, insight for the adoption leads, guidance and automation for the developers performing the changes. The idea behind that approach is fairly, fairly easy. We are focusing on uh, reducing the risk to make the migration process measurable and predictable. So with that, once we understand the um, the vision that we have for, for the tool. Let's get into an overview of, of Tackle 2.0 that is about to be released. We have we, uh, Tackle 1 released in July just uh, last year, has been around for quite some time, has been proven to be useful on the field. We are releasing Tackle 2, the next generation of, of the Tackle tooling, which will become the upstream project for the migration toolkit for application, the next generation of the tool. 
and it has a lot of exciting things. It enhances, it enhances what we uh, previously had on, on Tackle 1. So uh, let's talk about the different components that we have in Tackle. First of all, of course, an operator to make things as easy as possible so there is no need to fiddle around with uh, charts and everything. Everything gets automatically deployed and managed with an operator that is available uh, for uh, all Kubernetes distributions out there. The only requirement is to uh, install the operator lifecycle management manager sorry, on upstream distributions. If you're using OpenShift, that comes out of the box and should be available from, from day one. Uh, the usage is fairly easy, it provides a tackle CRD, everything gets installed and configured for you, but you still have some granularity to adjust the installation to the kind of cluster that, that the Kubernetes cluster that you have. And for the moment, we have uh, capability level two for the operator, but we're looking to enhance uh, the, the life cycle and, and make it even, even better and more uh, automated. So that's it, yeah, cool, I can install tackle uh, automatically or automagically. But uh, what can this thing do? First thing, uh, probably uh, key or, or, or the driver for the user experience in Tackle would be the application uh, portfolio, uh, inventory, sorry, which is used to maintain uh, an application portfolio of an organization. So the, the whole idea behind the inventory is to allow, allow organizations to have a holistic view of their whole application portfolio. And once they have the, this view, being able to classify applications in application types using an extensible tagging model that allows them to classify their applications in as many dimensions as they might want. So the idea is, to, is for an, uh, an organization to be able to classify their applications in application types, and with that, then being able to come up with suitable migration strategies for each one of these application types. Uh, aside from that, well, uh, we have expanded the application inventory, so now we have uh, integration with uh, source code and binaries repositories. We, uh, we can retrieve source code and binaries from different Maven or, or Git repositories, even subversion for the most legacy uh, organizations out there. And of course, if we are dealing with, uh, with source code repositories, we need to deal with credentials as well. So we have implemented a credentials managers, uh, management system that allows you to have a decoupled usage of, of credentials. So architects can consume credentials without n necessarily knowing the contents of such uh, credentials. So that's, that's uh, an enhancement on, on Tackle 2. <coughs> Sorry for that. Uh, Next thing will be application assessment. So uh, three pillars on, on, on Tackle, application portfolio management, assessment, and analysis. Assessment will be next. And by assessing, we, we understand a questionnaire-driven assessment for con uh, containerization suitability. So the idea of the tool is that it presents you with a questionnaire uh, with different answers, and out of this answer, the tool is able to identify risks that might prevent you from running the application uh, on containers as, as it uh, currently is. So it's pretty useful to get an overview of your application or application types and start understanding what would be the risk or the problems that you might have uh, when trying to onboard these applications or migrate these applications towards uh, Kubernetes. Next step to get more into, into the detail would be uh, application analysis. So once you have assessed your application portfolio, you are able to get down to the detail of each one application and run static analysis on your application source code on, and binaries and try to detect anti-patterns in your, in your source code that might be preventing you for, for, from running your, your application in, in containers. So, Right now, uh, the analysis bit is only compatible with Java applications. Sorry for that, but we're working on, on expanding it. This thing has been around for, for quite some years, the analysis mode, and we have done what, what we have done is integrated into the whole Tackle user experience. And of course, it supports a, uh, numerous migration paths and creates a rich set of reports. We will see some examples now. And yeah, let's see, for example, issue identification. Cool thing is that it detects where the problems are ha happening straight into your source code and points out to the exact line that might be a problem for you to run the application on the target platform. It also provides hints, it provides um, story points uh, for you to be able to measure the cost of migrating your, your, your application. This is one of the key things about the analysis module. 
There's also a technology identification system that allows you to get a deeper understanding of the technology stack of the analyzed applications. That might seem trivial, but when, when you are a large organization, you probably don't have all the details about each one of the, of, your, of the applications that you have in your portfolio. So this is very helpful to get meaningful and, and, and real information about the technologies uh, that are involved in each one of your, your applications. And uh, there's yet another thing which is, uh, for me, it's key, it's the dependencies identification. And uh, the coolest thing about this thing is that it is able to, by hash, identify each one of the different dependencies that your application might be using. Even if you are using a legacy application, let's say you live uh, in the past century and you're not using Maven or Gradle or anything, and you're just, you're just shoving in your, your jars into the main war or ER file, this thing is able to identify these jars and point you to the Maven coordinates into the Maven central repository. So that's great for the process of Mavenization of these legacy applications, which will definitely be a requirement from be, for bringing these applications into, into the cloud. There are many uh, migration paths supported by the tool out of the box. This thing was developed back in the day for the migrations between application servers, but we have expanded the rule sets that, that, the, that the tool uh, ships with. So we support things like, um, of course, uh, cloud native or, or, or cloud readiness, sorry. Uh, we are opening for other runtimes. There is a certain vendor that I cannot reveal just yet that is willing to contribute more rules for other container platforms and, 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 and cloud platforms as well. So we expect to expand these rule sets as, as, time, as time moves on. But you might be wondering, yeah, that's cool, but uh, what if I'm using a corporate framework, custom framework, or uh, this technology hasn't been just tackled just yet, what can I do? Well, this thing comes out of the box with a uh, custom rules development model. This thing is fully documented. So uh, it's fairly easy using an XML syntax to create your own rules. This is very powerful. In a matter of minutes, you can be uh, identifying anti-patterns of lots of uh, types or, or, or kinds uh, within your, your source code. So uh, yeah, it's, it's fairly easy to also tackle this kind of, no pun intended, tackle these uh, custom uh, use cases that you might be finding on, on large organizations. Cool thing about the uh, Tackle project is that this being a huge collaborative effort between Red Hat and IBM, uh, at least for the moment, but uh, there seems to be other, one, other vendors and GSIs that want to get involved in the, in the Tackle project as well. Uh, we have several initiatives. For the moment, key contributors are Red Hat and uh, IBM Research. For example, Tackle Hub, the main user experience and the application portfolio uh, has been contributed by Red Hat. Also Pathfinder, which is the, the project uh, powering the assessment module of Tackle. Also WindUp, which is the project behind the uh, analysis module of, of uh, WindUp. But there are other upcoming initiatives, really exciting stuff being contributed uh, by IBM Research. So for example, we have the containerization assessment, which is able uh, to identify which will be the most suitable uh, runtime image for an application based on a natural language description of the, of the application. So it uses AI ma and machine learning to try to match your description, the description of your application with a suitable uh, container image, which, which will be very, 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 very useful when we are dealing with a large portfolio with loose descriptions of the technologies involved which, with each one of the applications. We also have the automated configuration discovery project, which is able to understand um, the configuration files of a given runtime, uh, translate it into a canonical model, and then output any configuration file on any model uh, available. Available. So translate it into a uh, human. Uh, that will mean that, for example, if you have a Spring Boot application and you want to migrate toward Quarkus, it will be able to understand Spring Boot uh, configuration files and render them into Quarkus configuration files. Uh, they, they want to enhance this thing with AI, so it will be able to look for hard-coded value, uh, configuration values into, into your source code and extract them into configuration files as well. There's also the Data Intensive Validity Advisor, or DIVA, like we like to call it. 
which is a uh, transaction uh, analyzer. Basically, it detects uh, uh, dis uh, distributed transactions in your source code and it's able to uh, tell you which are the different participants of these uh, transactions and everything. So it basically analyzes the, the storage layer of your applications and gives you insights on the different actors, data stores that might be involved, which is especially uh, useful when you're trying to, your, to split your monolithic application into, into microservices. And finally, we have test-driven modernization, which uh, is one of the most exciting things in there. The idea behind that is to create some sort of safety net uh, so basically the, the main problem when, uh, that you have when you are trying to migrate is to ensure that the application behaves the same on the target platform. So this thing uh, using automatically generated uh, unit tests will be able to create a uh, functional profile of your application that can, be, can then be used when the application has been to migrated to ensure that the application behaves the same. So this is a really cool thing. I'm running out of time. Couple minutes? Okay, so let's talk uh, about the roadmap for Tackle. I will just focus on the next uh, release. By June, we will have Tackle 2.0 out there. We expect to have uh, uh, an enhanced version of Tackle 2.0, uh, of, of Tackle 2, Tackle 2.1 by Q3, having integration with some of these uh, Tackle projects from IBM Research that we discussed, and also for, uh, with Move to Cube. And uh, you might be saying, yeah, that's cool, but I, I just want to try this thing. So Tackle 2 beta is out now. now. So right now it is uh, available in the Tackle 2 operator uh, repository. There are instructions in there to, to install the, the tool. And we expect to have it uh, available in operator hub by the end of the day today, or maybe tomorrow. But if that's not enough, we will be demoing the whole thing uh, by tomorrow on the Red Hat booth. There is a demo theater in there. I, I will be running a demo of Tackle 2 at uh, yeah, for, for uh, quarter past four. I don't, have, I don't think we have time for questions, but uh, I'll be around. I'll be around the Red Hat booth. So thanks, everyone.